Yes, uh, welcome dear viewer to this week's lesson. In this quarter, we are looking at the themes from the book of John. In this fourth lesson, I'm going to look at the testimonies, the witnesses of Christ as the Messiah. What points to us Christ as the Messiah? Before we delve much into this week's lesson, I would ask my brother to introduce himself and then pray with us. Hello, dear viewer. My name is Tony Obuya. Welcome so much to uh, this uh, lesson five. Even as we begin, shall we invite the presence of God to guide us. Let's pray. Heavenly Father, once again, we are before you to listen to your word and to discuss and to share and to derive insight that will help us in our spiritual journey. Mm -hmm. It is your word, O oh Lord, that sanctifies and also liberates the human soul, sets us free from the slavery of sin. We pray that through this study, we may have an experience with your word that the end that you intend may be met in our lives to the glory and honor of your name. We pray in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Thank you so much, dear viewer. Uh, my name is Felix, and I would continue as we delve much into this book of John. Uh, my brother, we're looking in the last lesson, uh, in the first lesson, mm -hmm. we're looking at uh, uh, the last lesson, last, mm. last week's lesson, we're looking at the, the glory of God and what mm. would depict the glory of God. And I tend to draw a number of lessons at to our first lesson, mm. where we're looking at the witnesses of Jesus Christ. And we learned about four of them, actually in a nutshell. But in this week's lesson, we are going to look at much more details of the witnesses that Jesus Christ was truly the Messiah. Mm. And we looked at one of these witnesses as the scripture. The word of God tells us of whom Jesus is or tells us of his messiah, uh, messiahship. Mm. We also look at uh, the John the Baptist. John the Baptist also declares or witness of the messiahship of Jesus Christ. We also look at, uh, at, at the Father himself, and Christ talks of the claims of the Father and what he claims, that I and my Father are one. So again, also that testifies to us of Jesus Christ as the Messiah. As the Messiah. Mm. But how do we relate this with this week's lesson? Amen. Mm. Uh, thank you so much. The glory of God, you know, when you read John chapter 1, verse 14, yes, um, the gospel of John says that mm. we beheld his glory, the glory as of the only begotten of the Father, yes. full of grace and truth. How mm. is it possible for fallen humanity to be able to witness again mm. the glory of God. of God or the image of God, the perfect image of God as God would have us perceive? Uh, and, of course, the natural effects from Lesson 3, yes. uh, when it was being discussed, mm. we realized that some of the themes that result from this is that it causes us to respond, either yes. in belief or unbelief. unbelief. Yes. We choose to hear or not to hear, or not to hear the <laughs> yes. voice of God. Mm. And so it is important for us to be able to, to discern the glory of God. But naturally within ourselves, we lack the power mm. to be able to discern. Mm. And therefore, it costs God to put in operation the means of mm. revealing himself to us. Yes. That's the means that you have uh, presented now. Mm. There is the testimony of the scriptures. There is the testimony of his works. Mm. We uh, had a discourse on the miracles of <laughs> Jesus previously. Yes. There is the testimony of our heavenly father. Mm. There is the testimony of his disciples. Yes. And there is the testimony also of uh, his friends, friends, the prophets. <laughs> friends. <laughs> yeah. And yeah. one of the notable ones is, is John the Baptist. John the Baptist, yeah. And the object of this is just to lead us to believing that it is true what claim Jesus is making of himself. Verily, verily, I say unto you, mm -hmm. he that believes on me has everlasting life. That is in John chapter 6, mm -hmm. verse 47. So as Jesus has his discourse, and this is something that we may um, discover as the lesson discussion progresses. Mm -hmm. As Jesus has his discourse with people, he meets us at a certain level. Mm -hmm. 
And then he confronts us at that level, clears the fog, and sets us free to also be witnesses further forward mm -hmm. of his um, of his messiahship as yes. the one true messiah. No wonder the memory text in John chapter three verse three yes. uh, speaking to one of the people who would eventually be a witness for him. Yes. He says, Jesus answered and said unto him, Verily, verily, I say unto thee, mm -hmm. except a man be born again, he cannot see. see. The, the kingdom, kingdom of, of God. God. So that's pointing to the aspect of needing change. We ourselves mm -hmm. needing change from above. Yes. Uh, we have mentioned a number of uh, witnesses. Mm. And in this week's lesson, I'm going to look at how does John the Baptist witness about Jesus Christ mm. and his messiahship? How does Philip and Nathaniel, men who had prejudice about. And one question that strikes my mind is, Nathaniel asks, can something good come out of Nazareth? Mm. He's, questioning, he's questioning, but what happens in the end of it all? Mm. He is able to recognize that truly, you are the son of God. Son truly of something God. good can come out of Nazareth. Mm. But I want us to begin with John the Baptist. You know, John the Baptist is a witness of Jesus Christ. Mm. But what does he do as a witness? Mm. And what should we do as a, as a witness? Amen. Mm. Uh, you know, the, the question about John the Baptist, and you know, funny enough, there are certain quarters where it is claimed that there's a certain John the Baptist mm. today. Yes. So um, this is very much uh, in time for us mm. with this. In the Gospel of John chapter 1, from verse 19 through 23. I think this is short enough, we can uh, highlight it. And this is the record of John, when mm. the Jews sent priests and Levites from Jerusalem to ask him, who art thou? So they asked him, first of all, who are you? And he confessed and denied not, but confessed, I am not the Christ. Christ. So the first thing he says is, I am not the Christ. I am not the savior. That means I cannot save you. Yes. Okay. Then he says, and they asked him, what then? Art thou Elias? Are you Elijah? And he says, I am not. Art thou that prophet? Are you that prophet? Which prophet? In lesson one, we referred to that prophet, prophet yes. which Moses spoke about. And he answered and said, no. no. Then they said unto him, who art thou that we may give an answer to them that sent us? What sayest thou of thyself? He said, I am the voice of one crying in the wilderness. Make straight the way of the Lord, as said the prophet Isaiah. Isaiah yes. And so he refers them to the prophecies of old. Mm. That if you want to know what my role is, just yes. look at, at the, the prophecies of, of, of old. Yes. And so he's not just saying, believe my testimony merely because I call myself a prophet. Mm. But he says, confirm with the other prophets if we are in agreement. And I think we established that earlier, mm. that they have to go according to the law and to the testimony. Yes. And further forward, he will tell them that um, I am baptizing with water but there is one who will baptize with the Holy Spirit. That means John is a true prophet. And in Matthew 11, Jesus says he's the greatest uh, of them that have been born of women. Mm -hmm. And he says, look, there are things I can do and there are things I cannot, cannot do. do. I am just mere John, but Christ is above me. He is greater than me. In fact, he says he's preferred before me. I am even unworthy to unloose his shoe latchets. Yes. This is testifying of John's humility, that it is prerequisite of witnesses to realize that they have limitations, but the one they witness of has no limitations. He is all powerful. Yes. And they also have to have a humble posture as they approach the Messiah himself, even Christ Jesus, yeah. and lots of other lessons, my dear. Okay, and as you look at this, they may be just a nutshell, mm. maybe in a word or two. Mm. Who is a Messiah? So you know, we could also be looking at the witnesses of, 
of Jesus as the Messiah, who mm. is a Messiah. Mm. Mm. You know, um, the Messiah speaks, the, the word basically, if translated, because yes. Messiah is a transliteration mm. from Hebrew. Mm. The word Messiah, if it were to be translated, means the anointed one. The anointed one. So, uh, of course, when God anointed people, he anointed them for a particular purpose. purpose. Yes. What was the purpose of the anointed one? Yeah. And, you know, the purpose of the anointed one was twofold. Yes. But, but there was a misconception at the time then. Mm. There is a misconception at the time now yeah. concerning the purpose of, of the anointed the one. His coming at the first was to come as a lamb. Yes. And Isaiah 53, verse 7, talks about him going as a lamb to the, to the slaughter. Mm -hmm. First Peter chapter 2, verse 24, speaks of the selfsame thing, that by his stripes we are, we are what? Yeah. Yeah, healed, because he has borne the iniquity of us all. So the mm -hmm. first phase of Christ's ministry mm -hmm. was to come as a lamb, yes. to be sacrificed. That mm -hmm. means to give his life a ransom mm -hmm. for us yes. as our savior, mm -hmm. uh, to take the penalty and the burden of our sins. Mm -hmm. But the misconception among the rulers and the general nation, uh, Hebrew nation back then, and of course, by extension to the whole world, mm. was that he was coming as a ruler to break the Roman yoke. Yes. And so they expected that he would take the throne and mobilize earthly armies and take over and dominate the entire kingdoms of the world. Mm. And today, today, Mwalimu, there is another misconception concerning his coming. There are people who are preaching that even after he shall have come secretly, that there will be an opportunity after that for some people to still struggle to enter into, into the kingdom of God. In fact, the word, even by saying secretly, mm. that also is a misconception concerning the coming of Jesus Christ, the anointed one. Yes. And so as there was a misconception concerning his ministry back then, there is still a misconception today. Yeah. But the faithful witness says that he has come as a lamb back then. Faithful mm. witnesses today say he is coming as king of kings, kings yeah. and lord, lord of, of lords. lords. Yes, thank you so much. Let me just draw this back to our attention to the book of Daniel chapter 9. Mm -hmm. And I bring verse 24. I may just read or just pick on a few lines up to verses 27. Mm. But if I come to verse 24, it says 70 weeks are determined for your people mm. and your holy city to finish the transgression to make an end of sins and to make reconciliation for iniquity. Mm. But, al uh, but allow me to read shortly because I want to just bring a message. Mm. Uh, verse 26. And after 62 weeks, Messiah, Messiah mm. shall cut off, shall be cut off, but not for himself. Mm. And the people of his prince who is to come mm. shall destroy the city and the sanctuary. The end of it shall be a flood and till the end of the war, desolations are determined. What I wanted to pick from this point is that one reason why the Messiah was coming is to bring in to an end of sin, to offer a final sacrifice mm. for all the human, re human race. Mm. And when John the Baptist sees Jesus Christ comes, he describes him at, behold, the Lamb of, of God, God, which mm. takes away the, the sin, of the, sin the of the world. Mm. And so John, again, is pointing them back to the prophecies that confirm that this is the Lamb of God, the Messiah, anointed one, that is coming to do what? To finish the transgressions, mm. to bring an end of sins, and to make reconciliation. Again, in other words, he was bringing to our mind what is the sole mission of who? Of Jesus Christ. Amen. And so it picks this, that he talks of, behold, the Lamb of God that takes away the sin of the world. And what makes or what actually mm, uh, catches my attention is that John, as a witness of Jesus Christ mm. and his messiahship, points his disciples to Jesus Christ. Amen. Yes. And when he points his disciples, you know, the interesting thing about this, yes. um, 
I love this lesson. Mm -hmm. When he points them in John chapter 1, verse 35. Yes. Again, the next day after John stood and two of his disciples, mm -hmm. and looking upon Jesus as he walked, he says, Behold, the Lamb of God. And the two disciples heard him speak, and they followed who? Jesus. Jesus. You know, there are disciples today who hear <laughs> apparent John speak, <laughs> and, and instead of following <laughs> Jesus, they follow John. <laughs> yes. But these ones followed whom? Jesus. Mm -hmm. So uh, one of the, the um, you know, we are talking about witnesses mm -hmm. to the true Messiah or yes. to the Messiah. Yeah. But one of the effects of being a true witness of the Messiah is that you lead people, people to? not to follow you, <laughs> but to follow but Jesus. to follow him, yeah. that is the Messiah. You mm. give them a desire to spend time yeah. with them. We hope that you will have a desire at the end of this to, to spend Jesus. time with Christ and to follow him. Then Jesus turned and saw them following and saith unto them, What seek ye? Then said, they said unto him, Rabbi, which is to say, being interpreted, Master, mm. where dwellest thou? So they were not just merely following Jesus, but they wanted to know where Jesus lives, where the truth lives. Mm. They wanted to know the house where the truth is found, where the Messiah is found. Uh, and he says to them, come and do what? Come That's and see. Not that very language. Come and see. They came and saw where he dwelt and abode with him that day, for it was about the 10th hour. Uh, about the 10th hour, that would be 4 p.m. 4 p.m., yes. And they abode with him. You know, the song says, sitting at the feet of, of Jesus. Jesus. Yes. Oh, what words I hear him say. Mm. Happy place, so near, so precious. May I find it there each day. Oh, what words they must have heard Jesus say. Mm. Uh, it's not recorded what they had, yes. but it's recorded the effect that it had upon them. That immediately after they had spent time with him, the following day they leave and um, Andrew, one of them, goes to his brother, begins from Jerusalem, mm. and he becomes a witness in verse 41 of the same chapter. Yes. And he says, we have found the Messiah. And he brings him to whom? To Christ Jesus. Yes. So the effect of spending time with the Messiah, mm. if you're pointed rightly to the Messiah and you come to the Messiah, yes. the effect, the, not the side effect, but the, the direct effect, yes. is that you also will become a witness, witness. to the Messiah. Not to bring people to yourself, but, but to, to the Messiah. Actually, I love how lesson writer puts this part, mm. that the entire emphasis of the gospel of John is to bring to light who Jesus is. Mm. So that this good news, which good news? Whom Jesus is, is. is and mm -hmm. his purpose for us mm. may be shared with the world. Mm. And I suppose if John and Andrew had possessed an unbelieving spirit mm. of the priest and the rulers, then they would have come to Jesus Christ mm. to seek for mistakes, yes. to find on what point can we plot him and, ki and kill, him. kill him. If they had come with such a spirit of, okay, let us, let us try to find who is this man with a motive of judging him and so on, mm. then they would have not been found to be learners mm. at the feet of Jesus, Jesus Christ. So for me to be a good witness of Jesus Christ, I must be found a la a a mm. For me to be a learner, I must come with a contrite heart that is ready to receive the precious gems from Jesus Christ. And you know, this brings us to some two disciples. So yeah. Actually, one has a, has a preformed opinion. <laughs> sure. He says that, you know, behold, we have found mm. Jesus of Nazareth. Mm. And one asks and says, you know, my friend, can something good come out of Nazareth? Mm -hmm. As in already had a preformed opinion. Uh, so my brother, just on this note, what are some of the steps that we are seeing that this witness of Jesus Christ mm. is able to overcome the prejudice? Because you know, we have our brothers, one, some of them don't even believe that Jesus Christ was the son of God. Mm. They call him as a prophet, a powerless man. 
So how can we go about this? So of course, um, think about it. You know there's a, a certain country <laughs> where there is a certain uh, city and that city is called Sen City. Uh, yes. That means it is the same capital <laughs> yes. of that country. So mm. if perchance somebody is watching and they hail from that country, think mm. of someone, a close friend of yours coming to you and telling you, we have found the Messiah, mm. Jesus of Sen City. Mm. The first reaction would be, how, how <laughs> on earth would a Messiah come from such a place? Mm. And of course, there were prejudices that were already formed in the hearts of the people, mm. in spite of the fact that they might have been genuine seekers for truth. Mm. And, and, and that, uh, a, a good case in point would be Nathaniel, mm. who Philip, having spent time with Jesus, yes. goes to reach out to. Mm. In John chapter 1, verse 43 through verse 46, that's where mm. we we find the story. And mm -hmm. these two are friends. Yes. And when Jesus, uh, when, when Philip mentions that I have found uh, the Messiah, mm -hmm. and then he names him Jesus of Nazareth, the natural reaction is Nazareth? Mm -hmm. Can <laughs> any think. good thing come out, out of, of Nazareth? Nazareth. <laughs> but Jesus is termed as the lily of the valley, mm -hmm. that he can blossom as the beautiful lily in spite of the mark and mire that the valleys normally appear to be, mm -hmm. um, or the rose of Sharon. Yes. And so this tells us that sometimes God can, can also spring up good things yes. uh, out of the dirtiest of places. Mm -hmm. Maybe your life feels like it is the dirtiest of places. God can still make something good, good. out of it. Mm -hmm. But beyond that, there is the need to overcome prejudices. Mm -hmm. And one point that I find very crucial mm. is that, first of all, there needs to be a certain level of okay. trust between two people. Mm. Uh, for you to be able to witness effectively to somebody, make a friend of them. Mm. I remember one lesson way past, uh, it was titled The Role of the Church in the Community. Mm. And the lesson writer said that the whisper of a friend is far more acceptable to a man's soul that, than the shout of a stranger or an enemy. Mm. And probably that's what you need to do. Probably that's what we need to do. We need to become friends, friends. with people, mm. to show them that we are amicable, we are sociable, we desire their good. Mm. And that may help in breaking some of these unforeseen barriers and prejudices that are set in mm. human souls. Yes, I love how the lesson writer puts it. He talks of that the friendship between Philip and Nathaniel mm. was so strong mm. than the prejudice. And so as we seek to reach out to people, despite the prejudice that they would be having, we are called to be their friends. At least out of that friendship, they may see Jesus Christ. Mm. I know somebody could also be watching and asking, can something good come out of me? I feel that as in my life is so wasted, I feel that I'm very lonely and low. Mm. I don't deserve even to be a Christian. I want to tell you, dear viewer, that Jesus Christ, the wonderful <clears throat> miracles that he made, that even transforming water into wine, mm. is able to tell us that Jesus Christ can still transform our lives. Amen. And so when you ask yourself, can something good come out of me? I want to tell you that yes, it is possible because Jesus Christ is the maker of good things. Amen. Yeah. Amen. And, and this, a man who comes to Jesus Christ, <laughs> uh, this is a wealthy man. <laughs> wealthy and learned. <laughs> wealthy and learned. A teacher yeah. and a member of the synagogue. Mm. Uh, uh, and he comes to find something from Christ. Mm. What does he go home or take home? Of course, when he comes to Jesus, mm. you know, when, when you talk to learned people, you have to really be careful. <laughs> yes. Because learned people know how to ask um, insightful questions. To be specific, a lawyer. <laughs> yes. yes. <laughs> and, yes. And this was one of them. He comes mm. to, to Jesus and begins, you know, there's normally a way you try to build rapport by uh, issuing a compliment or two. Yes. Uh, about somebody's style and stuff like that. So Nicodemus comes to Christ in John chapter 3 and he begins his discourse mm. as would be a learned man. Mm. He says, Rabbi, yes. 
we know that thou art a teacher come from God, for no man can do these miracles that yes. you do, except God be with him. Uh -huh. What a way to start. <laughs> Calls him first of all, Rabbi. Rabbi. And then he comes in the dead of night mm. when everything is dark, kind of hiding himself, mm. um, so that his clique cannot notice that yeah, he yeah. has a genuine desire mm. to know about this. Uh, there's a, a <coughs> musician that says an ancient rabbi mm. is going to a young <laughs> rabbi, <laughs> rabbi yes. to ask him concerning a strange doctrine that he is listening to mm. and seems to be touching his soul and transforming his life. Mm. And Jesus goes straight with him to the point of weakness. Mm. Um, and this is a motif also that runs through the book of John. Yes. When he, Jesus speaks to Nathaniel, the previous one that we were talking about, mm. he says, while you were under that tree, I, I saw you. And Ivan, he, he tells him, behold an Israelite indeed. Uh, yes. In whom is no, no guile deceit. or no deceit. Yes. And Nathaniel asks, how, how do, do you, you know, know me? me? And then he says, truly you are the son of God. <laughs> And through that he recognizes. So here also he flashes that ability mm. to Nicodemus by going straight to the point. And he tells him, look, you boast that you are a Pharisee mm. and you boast that you know the law, mm. but you must be born again. Mm. And he's like, now how do I get born again? <laughs> and he realizes in spite of the knowledge I might boast about, there are things yes. that I'm ignorant of. Mm. And then he realizes also that though this looks like a young upstart of a rabbi, the depth of knowledge present in him cannot be merely attributed to age and experience. Mm. This must be one from above. In yes. fact, I love verse 12 mm. where Jesus tells him, mm. if I have told you earthly things and you believe them not, how shall you believe if I tell you of heavenly, heavenly things? things? And you know that humbles him. And he recognizes that truly I need what this person is alluding to. I need the salvation of God. In spite of the Hebrew uh, belief or the, that ancient Hebrew belief that by being a descendant of Abraham, I am already full and perfect. I am in need of God's salvation. Perchance you think being in church is already guarantee that mm -hmm. I am safe. But the message for me here is, I still need Jesus. I still need his salvific power in my life. Uh, thank you so much. And you know, one thing that we learn with this, we find out that throughout the book of John and through the gospel, we find at some point, Nicodemus is coming back to Jesus Christ. Mm. And uh, he attends to him. He recognizes that truly, this is the son of God. Mm. And all these are bearing witness that truly Jesus Christ is the Messiah. Mm. He's the anointed one, anointed to bring salvation to each and every mankind. Mm. And you know, that is why I love how the book of Romans chapter 12, uh, chapter 10 verses 12 mm -hmm. uh, talks about him. I think we can just read that. Mm. Help me if you get there faster. You read no. with me. Romans chapter 10, Romans verse 12. 10, 12. It says, Yes. For there is no difference yes. between the Jew and the Greek. Mm. For the same Lord over all mm. is rich unto all that call upon him. Yes, verse 13. Verse 13. Mm. For whosoever shall mm. call upon the name of the Lord mm. shall, be saved. shall be saved. And so this brings the picture that, you know, the salvation is not meant for some chosen few, mm. maybe say for an elected nation, maybe for people from some parts of, you know, we'd say that maybe for those who comes from Milimani and, and all that, me, I come from Obunga and I come from Manyata. I don't think if I deserve mm. to be among the Christian community, mm. or Jesus Christ is saying that whosoever calls on his name would be saved. Mm. And therefore Christ invites you and invites me that we may understand him and truly whom he is my brother in the next uh, maybe 10 seconds you can say your parting shot as we come to the end of this uh, lesson I, I am not able to single out specifically where the quotation is but there is um, 
a quotation I once had from a certain someone that uh, no sooner is does a man come to Christ than is born, than in, is him. born in him the desire, the desire to, to witness make. to others yes. or to make known to and others what a precious friend yes. he has found in Jesus Christ. The book Steps to Christ, page 78, paragraph 1. Amen, amen. Mm -hmm. That would be my parting thought for you. Do, does a fire burn within your soul to make known to others the manifold riches of the grace of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ? If that is your experience, then you can call yourself a witness for Christ. If that's not your experience, then perhaps we can ask God together with me uh, that God may give us that experience with Christ that burns within our hearts, moves us to be ready to give a reason always for the hope that is within us with meekness and fear. Okay, thank you so much, dear Viva, for joining us in this week's lesson. We invite you to continue studying with us the book of John as we look at the themes in the book of John. If you have any question, kindly don't forget to ask them on our chat, or you can reach to us through our mail. We ask you to continue subscribing and sharing the experience with us. Share this link and save a life. May the Lord bless you and let us pray. Loving Father and our God in heaven, we thank you so much for this opportunity that you may study your word. Truly, Lord, you call unto us to be your true witnesses that would declare your true character, your glory, and your purpose for our lives. We ask you, loving Lord and God, that may you draw us closer to you that our lifestyle may be that which will glorify your name. Grant us strength and favor that, Lord, we may be able to share this good news with other people. May this message draw us closer to you than ever before. For this is our prayer of faith, believing and trusting in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen.